Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 30. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister, and that's trouble. Envy is a jealousy. It's an anger with jealousy. And it causes much trouble. This is the reason why the Pharisees, the Sadducees of Jesus' time, delivered Jesus to Pilate. Pilate, recorded by the Holy Spirit, said, I knew because of envy. Proverbs says envy is weightier than anger and something else. I forget what that is. And said unto Jacob, Give me children. Well, let's go back to 2931. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived, verse 33, and Leah conceived, and she conceived, verse 34, and she conceived. In 35, she conceived again. The problem's not with Jacob. She saw her sister having all these children, and she, give me children. I'm talking to the wrong one. You need to talk to God. Or else I die. Well, I don't know. But, this is how the, the quarrel between the two. Hannah is in the same case. It brings Hannah to tears. Her husband goes yearly to, to the temple, I mean to the tabernacle. And when she goes, she's there, probably on her knees, I don't know. But she is in tears. She is speaking to God, not with voice, but with her lips. I need a child. Eli thinks she's, she's drunken. She goes, no, 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 no. I'm just pouring out my heart. And the thing is, for some women, I mean, they don't get a child. It's, they'll find a pet, a cat, or a dog, something. It's built into a woman to be motherly. But here, I don't know, I mean, there's, there's envy. I mean, right now it's four to nothing, if you want to keep a score. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And said, am I in God's stead? So... Give me children or I die. And Jacob's like, it's not me. Don't you put me on a pedestal like that. Don't you put me equal with God. Woman, you got to go meet with God. you got to go talk to with God. As we will see what Hannah does later on for Samuel. Am I in God's stead? Who has withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? It's God that's done it. Not me. I've got four boys already right now. Amen. And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah. What's going on here? Rachel would never have heard the story of Abraham and Hagar. No way. Maybe. Huh? Maybe they got around. But here she is. All right, here's my handmaid. Did they hear something about Abraham and Hagar and Ishmael? Did that make the world now? But here's my handmaid. Go in unto her. It's a, yeah, it's a family story. So, Abraham's sin is stretching far into his grandchild. Abraham's sin came across his son. Oh, honey, will you tell them you're my sister? Oh, here's my handmaid. 
And we got to realize generations in the future, the Lord tarries, our sin may be produced in our grandchildren. Man, if you go out with the wrong woman and get a sexually transmitted disease, some diseases pass on to your children, your children that will be born after that, and then children after that. I don't know how many generations that goes. You give yourself a bad name, a wicked name of character. That will hang on at least to your child, not your grandchildren. How many children today do you know that are named Jezebel or Judas? Why not? Why haven't you ever gone to a baby carriage? Oh, that's a beautiful Judas you got there. He's so, no. It's a bad name. It's a wicked name. How many people say, "Oh, I'm going to do is I want to move. I want to move to Sodom and Gomorrah." No, even though God said no one would live there. Everyone wants to go to the Holy Land, but no one wants to go to Sodom. So it carries on. And we got to realize as parents and we need to teach a pastor needs to teach when he's got a man and a woman who are going to be married before they're married you need one thing one of the things we got to talk about is what you two will do will be carried off into your offspring and you don't know how far you need to realize that and she said behold my maid Bilha in 16.2, this was a proxy like Hagar. So you know this is going to be trouble. This did not work the first time. This brought forth a wild man. But we are in the tribe of Joe, uh, in the tribe of Jacob. Excuse me. Go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees. That's the way they gave birth. The woman was on her knees. I understand there's, you know, you can lie down. Understand on your knees. And then they have the water birth. That I may also have children by her. And she gave Bilhah her handmaid to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. You never see Jacob or Abraham. Well, no, I don't really want her, dear. I want you. No, so I'll take her. And Bilhah conceived. It's not you. It's not Jacob. The problem. And bear Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God has judged me. Ooh. Actually, really, it's verse 31 of chapter 29. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, and, but Rachel was barren. The problem is really your husband. Because he loves you more than he loves Leah. And the funny thing about it is you look at it, he worked seven years for Rachel. And the hatred is probably so strong to Leah. God said, you know what? I'm going to bless that woman over Rachel, the one that you do love. And has also heard my voice and has given me a son. Therefore, called she his name Dan. Dan means judge or judging. Daniel means God is judge. Now, Dan, here's the first child born of a handmaid of Jacob. And this child, Dan, is so close to the Antichrist. When we, Lord willing, when we get to the end of Genesis and the, and the blessing goes out to Dan, he is likened to a raving wolf, uh, wolf I believe it is. One of the, I think, Deuteronomy, he's completely eliminated, I think. It's, but the 144,000, Dan is not mentioned at all. Dan is the most northernish tribe. They're the first ones in the book of Judges to pick up the Roman Catholic ways. With the priest that's a Levite that's hired and is called father. The children of Dan pick that guy up and they pick up that religion. Dan is troubled. Like Ishmael is trouble. The firstborn of the wrong wife. And Rachel said, God has judged me and has heard my voice. 
and has given me a son, therefore called his call, called she his name Dan. And Bilhah, Rachel, Rachel's maid, conceived again. He didn't go unto her just once. <laughs> he kept doing it. And bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, with great wrestlings. Oh, come on, I don't think so. You're the one with the envious heart. You're the one with the hatred. You're the one that's wrestling against God. After all, that last boy, oh, God heard me. Have wrestled with my sister. And I have prevailed. Really? Uh, Leah has four children. And you have zero. You have not won. Envy brings you with a false cause of your mind. It brings you to no reality. The reality of those Pharisees and the scribes didn't even realize by the scripture there was the Messiah. And they never got right. And she called his name Naphtali, which means wrestler. I would hate to be the one to explain to these when these boys say, hey, why did you call me this name? Oh boy. <clears throat> When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. Oh, boy. Ooh, one, so now they're both at it. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bared Jacob a son. So it's not, it's not Jacob's problem. He's having children, no problem. And Leah said, a troop cometh. Oh, yeah. And she called his name Gad. Gad means troop. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. He has gone into his wife's, like he's supposed to. He has gone into his handmaid's, not supposed to. Not once, but four times. The, the, two, the two maids bear two children. And these are the twelve tribes of Israel. Isn't God great for forgiving us our sins? And Leah's now watch this one. This is a great one. This is a great this is a good 13 in your Bible. My jury your 13 verse, they're bad. But this is a good one. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. Happy means blessed, blessed means happy. There's the Bible definition of blessed. It's happy. And she called his name Asher, which means happy. And, Re oh, here we go. Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest. I think Ruth is in the barley harvest, working into the wheat harvest. And found mandrakes in the field. And you can go online, Google, whatever, about the mandrake. And there's several things about the mandrake that sexual and all that you can look it up on your own and brought them unto his mother Leah Reuben what you got there I got some mandrakes mom then Rachel said to Leah which has to be there give me I pray thee of thy son's mandrakes give me some of those mandrakes because it'll help me they believe it, it would make a woman fertile and it was delicious and it was a, a drug like So, according to what they say about these mandrakes, she's almost asking for drugs. And read about it. It's interesting. About the mandates and all the things that people talk about, you know, what the seeds and all that. But, and she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? Well, they were first married. And Jacob seems, by that comment, he still seems to love Rachel more than he does Leah. And wouldst thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And you took Jacob, now you want his, now you want my son's fruit. And Rachel said, therefore, he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. So, if you give me those mandrakes, I'll let you have our husband tonight. And they're supposed to relieve of, 
of uh, barrenness again. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening. He's a working man. And Leah went out to meet him. He's on his way home. She's out where he comes home and said, Thou must come in unto me. For surely I have hired thee with my son's mandate. Can you imagine what's running through his head right now? What, what did you two do? What's going on here? They are battling back and forth for Jacob. Evidently, Leah really loves Jacob. But Jacob doesn't love him. Her. Jacob loves Rachel, but Rachel is angry and resourceful in the wrong ways. Here's my handmaid. Oh, let me have some of those psychedelic melons you got there, young boy. Yeah, well, no, 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 leave my son alone. You got him. I'll give you those mandates. I'll, I'll give you our husband. Oh, okay, here you go. <laughs> For surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lied with her that night. <laughs> There's no question. Okay. Fine. And God hearkened unto Leah. And you got to watch God play out in all this. This is just. And she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. See, wait a minute. He says, no. Her womb has produced five sons. And Leah said, God has given me hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband, and she called his name Issachar. Issachar means hire. Mom? Yes, Issachar? Can you tell me where, why you named me hire? And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God has endued me with a good dowry payment. Now will my husband dwell with me. He's not living with her. Now, I don't know if he's got his own separate tent or is he staying with Rachel. But he's not staying with her. By what her words are. Because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun, which means dwelling. Let me sure I get that correct. Yeah, dwelling. And afterwards she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. Dinah means judgment. And then she has no more children after that. And God remembered Rachel. And God hearkened to her. And opened her womb. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. She's sorrow. She's upset. She hasn't had any children. Jacob's up to ten now. And she called his name Joseph, adding. What Joseph means, adding. And said, The Lord shall add to me another son. Rachel is a prophet, a prophetess. Because she just had Joseph, and she said, God's going to give me another son, which will happen. So she's a prophetess. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, and Jacob said to Laban, Send me away. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of this place. That I may go unto my own place and to my own country. It's time to go home. I'm done here. And we'll see that by what goes on is the hire of Jacob has come to the end. He has fulfilled his years. Now he's, he's made the bargain. He has made the, the deal signed, sealed. All right, I got to go home now. Give me my wives, my children, for whom I have served thee. Seven years for Leah, seven years for Rachel. And let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said, I pray thee, 
if I have found favor in thy eyes. Terry, Laban has been blessed by God because of Jacob. Jacob is a hard worker that Laban does not want to let him go. Get that characteristic that we learn of Jacob from Laban. Jacob is so good in character, Laban's like, no, no, no. If you leave, God's blessing is going to go. And if you leave, I can't find somebody who's going to work as hard as you do. For I have learned by experience that the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah, has blessed me for thy sake. And that's where Jesus said the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Joseph is doing his work and the people that he are working for, their houses are blessed. The apostles, I mean, well, the disciples go out sent by Jesus and they're being blessed. And he said, appoint me thy wages and I will give thee. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. So Jacob took care of cattle. For it was little which thou hadst before I came. You had these little cattle. You didn't have much. But since I've been here, you got a lot now. And now increase unto multitude. And the Lord has blessed thee since my coming. And now when I have provided, now, uh, now when shall I provide for my own house also? So it's evident that with Jacob being there, serving the Lord, that Laban is getting blessed. And Laban knows that. Laban, remember he loved the well. Oh, Rebecca, where'd you get all that gold and silver? And he said, What shall I give thee? That's Laban. And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thee all the speckled and spotted cow, cattle. You know, you see a cow, he's got white and black, he's got brown, he's got lines and all that. That's what he's talking about. And all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, of such shall be my hire. The brown cows are pure brown, that's yours. The, the black cows that are pure black, that's yours. The white cattle that are all white, that's yours. If they got brown, white, and black, black and white, white and brown, black and brown, they're mine. As with the goats and as with the sheep. You keep the pure colors, I get the, you know, the, the spotted. And evidently the, the cows that were spotted didn't mean much. Had little value because Laban's going to say, okay, yeah, give me the pure colors. I will pass through thy flock today, removing thence all the speckled, the spotted cattle. All right, cattle. All the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats. Sheep, cattle, goat. Of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, they shall be counted stolen with me. In other words, if all my if any of my animals are not spotted, if they're not speckled, I stole. So this is a good way to tell yours, yours and mine. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And Laban said, Behold, I would be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he goats that were ring streaked and spotted, and all the she goats that were spotted and that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them unto the hand of his sons. So his sons are old enough to help and take care of animals. 
It's not like there are 12 babies. They're grown up. They're working with Jacob in the field. How old they are? How, how old can a child be? I'd say five, six, maybe seven. And he sent three days journey betwixt himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. And Jacob took with him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree. tree. And pills, that means the peel, white straits in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods, the little sap that's inside the branches. And he set the rods which he had pilled before the flocks in the gutters, in the watering troughs, when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. So he, he, he strips off the bark of these trees and they got a, a white sap on them. And he puts them in front of where the, where the animals drink. Now, you can do an internet search on what is going to happen next. And people will talk about it. And I went and asked farmers. And there's no clear reason of what Jacob is doing now. I couldn't, I couldn't find anybody to answer me. I couldn't find any web pages to talk about Genesis 30. I mean, they, they, they explained what Jacob's doing, but they couldn't explain what is going on here. And I went, like I said, I went to people who took care of cattle and sheep and all that, and I couldn't get the answer. And the flocks could see before the rods, and brought forth cattle, rain streaked, speckled, and spotted. Those are Jacob's. When they come out of the mother animal, those are his. Now, when it says they should conceive, and when they came out, well, I don't, I didn't should have should check. When a cow conceives or a sheep conceives, they don't bear a child, right? A child, an animal at that moment. There's plenty of time going on in Genesis 30. The boys have grown up, and now you've got to wait for the animals to bear their animals. The flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle within how much time of gestation? Ring streaked, speckled, and spotted. Time is. And Jacob did separate the lambs and set his face, set the faces of the flock toward the ring streaked, and all the brown in the flock of Laban, and he put his own flocks by themselves, and put them not unto Laban's cattle. He's separating the cattle from the sheep. Sheep eat deeper into the roots of grass than the cattle. Sheep will leave nothing for the cattle to eat. And it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, big and mighty bull, and the cow, Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters. So, the cow and the bull are doing their thing. And they're strong cattle. Jacob comes up with his rod and puts it in front of their face. That's what I, I think. That's what it looks like. As they're drinking and as the activity is going on. And this would cause the calf to be spotted, ring streaked, or speckled. He said, I could not find anybody who talked about that. It could be a miracle by God. It could be. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban's, and the stronger was Jacob. Now, do you see Jacob working here? He's a character. He's given Laban all the, 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 the weak, sickly cattle. That's yours. Here are mine. That's yours. He's giving them the sick ones. Mine, big and strong. One reason is he's going to be going back to his homeland. That's a long travel. And Jacob, he's got that thing in him that he's got, you know, He's got to work things out. That's Jacob. Oh, brother, can you give me some beans, please? Sure. Oh, thank you. 
Give me your birthright. What? Jacob, sell me by vow your birthright. Okay. Well, I'm going to go through the fields. I'm going to take the cattle. Okay. What cattle are you? Ring straight, spotted, speckled. That's good. Now, Laban has no idea that Jacob's going to make it to be that he gets the lean flesh. The one probably you can see the ribs. You ain't going to get much steak on him. Probably won't produce no milk. And his are going to be big and strong. But the cattle were feeble, he put not he put them not in. So the feeble were Laban's and the stronger were Jacob's. And the men uh, and the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. This is how Jacob gets his wealth. And it's an honest well because Laban made a deal with Jacob that you'll serve seven years for that daughter, seven years for that daughter, and then he's, he, he proposed how many years for the cattle, and Jacob's time has ended, and he's making his profit. He's making the deal. As far as the deal, he's done nothing wrong. But he is a little conniving to get his deeds. And that's where we leave. But often we'll get into more about it in chapter 31.